Y'all, if I see a piece of mathematical ephemera, I am going to collect it. I've got for you today an entrance exam for the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, yes, that one, from 1869. And one of the things I usually see when people post about these on social media is, wow, look at all the things they could do that students today can't. And on one level, I think I kind of get defensive, like I'm a teacher, I think my students are amazing. But on another level, yeah, of course they could do different things 150 years ago. The world was a completely different place 150 years ago. It would be weird if we had an entrance exam from 150 years ago that looked precisely like an entrance exam today. There are things that our students probably can't do, and there are lots of things the student from 1869 couldn't do that students today take for granted. That being said, I do want to focus on one question in particular here, this question number three, because this is a question that definitely could still pop up on an entrance exam today, or whatever the equivalent is. This is a basic algebra question. Multiply 3a squared plus ab minus b squared by a squared minus 2ab plus 3b squared, and then divide that product by a plus b. And not only is this a thing that we still ask students to do today, it's a thing that a particularly modern technique would really help that student accomplish. And so what I wanna do is look a little bit at that technique and then how we could use it to solve this question from the 1869 MIT entry exam. A little background before we get into this particular question. Over the last 10 or 15 years, there's been some controversy about how we're teaching students how to multiply in new ways. And I don't want to get into the controversy of it all, but the thing that people talk about when they talk about that controversy is something called the area model for multiplication. The area model for multiplication is exactly what it sounds like. It's a way to think about multiplication using area. So a very common thing to do if we wanted to multiply three by four, and we were learning this in second grade or something, would be to think of a literal three by four rectangle, split it up into its three by four units everywhere, and then just count up the resulting units. In this case, we can tell pretty easily there end up being 12 units, and it's in that sense that we think of three times four as 12. Now, one thing that's nice about the area model for multiplication is that it's extensible. We can do lots of other things with it than simply multiply three times four. So so consider something like 13 times 14. One way a student might learn to multiply this is let's break 13 and 14 down into some different components. We can break them down basically by their digits. The one in a 13 is a tens digit, right? And 13 indeed is a 10 plus a three. Similarly, the one of the 14 is in the tens place. The four of the 14 is in the ones place. And another way to think about 14 is 10 plus four. Now, once we write it this way, we we can come up with some partial products using this area model. 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 4 is 40, so we're thinking of each of these boxes as separate rectangles where we're just using the dimensions to come up with their area. 10 by 3 as a rectangle has an area of 30, and then finally we do have our original 3 by 4 rectangle here coming from multiplying those ones digits, which of course is going to give us back an area of 12. If we take these partial products and we add them together, then we end up with 182, which, not at all coincidentally, happens to be the product of 13 times 14. The source of the controversy is this does not look exactly the same way as the standard algorithm for multiplication. Specifically, if you perform the standard algorithm for multiplication, then you would stack the 13 and the 14 on top, and you would still take partial products, just two partial products fewer. You would compute 4 times 13 first, that would give you 52, and then you would compute compute 10 times 13. That's why we move one space over in the standard algorithm. That would give you 130, and of course, when you add that together, you get the same product of 182. Now, it's important to recognize that the partial products we got from the area model for multiplication and the partial products we get for the standard algorithm actually are the same partial products. The only thing we didn't do over here in the standard algorithm is we didn't draw it out in a series of rectangles, and we didn't split the 13 into to 10 plus 3. But otherwise, these two methods are identical. Now, you might reasonably wonder, well, if the methods are identical, why not just stick with the old standby, right? What was wrong with the standard algorithm? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And first of all, we do still teach the standard algorithm, don't you worry. But second of all, there's another thing that teachers like about the area model for multiplication. The area model for multiplication lends itself really well to multiplying out and factoring polynomials. Let's imagine that the thing we want to 
wanted to multiply was not 13 and 14, but instead x plus 3 and x plus 4. Just like we did before, we're going to split our box into four different rectangles, and we're going to treat each of these like a rectangle that we can find the area of given its dimensions. It's just that instead of the dimensions being numbers like 10 and 3 and 10 and 4, we're going to mix together dimensions that are variables with dimensions that are numbers. So we still have our 3 by 4 makes 12 area rectangle, but we also have something like an x by x rectangle, which would have an area of x squared. And then an x by 4 rectangle over here would have an area of 4x, and an x by 3 rectangle would have an area of 3x. We can still take these partial products and add them together, it's just that now when we add them together, we're only going to add together like terms. That is, the x squared doesn't have anything that it goes with, much like the 12 doesn't have anything that it goes with. But these two boxes here, the 3x and the 4x, they do go together, and so we get the polynomial product x squared plus 7x plus 12. Now, that's nice enough as far as it goes, but where the area model for multiplication really shines is when we want to do this process backwards. Let's say we know there is some polynomial that came from the multiplication of two binomials like x plus 3 and x plus 4. Perhaps we're looking at something like x squared plus 8x plus 15. We want to figure out what those binomials are that we multiplied together, and we're not quite sure how to start that factoring process. But if we think back to what we did over here for the area model, well, that x squared must have come from this upper left-hand corner. In fact, furthermore, it must have come from x times x, right? And that 15, the number by itself, that didn't have any like terms that added together either and so it must have come from this bottom right-hand corner. Now, unlike x squared being x times x, there are lots of things that we could multiply together to get 15. We could multiply 3 and 5, 1 and 15, negative 1 and negative 15, negative 3 and negative 5, and so on. But remember, that middle term that we came up with earlier, that came from the sum along this particular diagonal. And so what I actually want as I think about what would go out here, the things I multiplied together to make 15, is I also want to get two numbers that I could add together to make 8x, matching this middle term. And so as I think through the possibilities, the only two that actually make sense are 3x and 5x, which means that we would originally have started with a 3 and a 5 on the outside of this box. And that is one way to know that the factored form of x squared plus 8x plus 15 is x plus 5 times x plus 3. Now, I'm not saying this didn't exist 150 years ago, but it definitely was not a prevalent technique 150 years ago. Nevertheless, it's going to be exactly what we need to answer this question from the MIT entrance exam efficiently. The question the question here wants us to take 3a squared plus ab minus b squared, multiply that by another trinomial, a squared minus 2ab minus 3b squared, and then divide that whole thing by a plus b. And right away, I should be a little suspicious. Why are they asking me to multiply and then divide by this other seemingly disconnected binomial? In fact, if I imagine this kind of thing with actual numbers, let's say somebody told me, hey, can you multiply 311 times 42 and then divide that whole thing by 7. 311 times 42 is not the hardest math in the world to do, but it's a three-digit number times a two-digit number. It might take a little bit of scratch work, and I don't really feel like it. On the other hand, if I recognize, wait, 7 goes into 42 six times, I can perform that division first and simplify my multiplication considerably. 311 times 6, well, that's a lot easier to compute than what they originally asked me to do. The same thing is going on on this MIT problem. We are going to attempt to factor either one of these two original trinomials they wanted us to multiply together and see if maybe we get lucky and we can divide out that a plus b earlier in the process and save ourselves a little bit of work. And again, this is where the box method comes into play. Take a look specifically at that second trinomial, a squared minus 2ab minus 3b squared. If you imagine trying to put this into to the box method, the area model thing. The a squared might come from that upper left-hand corner. In fact, it might come from a times a, right? And then the minus 3b squared, that would be the part that comes from the bottom right box. 
products. And again, there are only a few things that multiply to make negative 3b squared. To know exactly what we want in particular though, we want not only that they would multiply to negative 3b squared, but also that they would add up to negative 2ab when we look at those partial products across this diagonal. What we end up wanting here are a negative 3ab and a positive ab, because in that case, we can look across this bottom row and we can say, oh, it must be a minus 3b that formed this up and down dimension. We were multiplying an a by, for example, to get negative 3ab, and for that matter, that we multiplied a b by to get negative 3b squared. And then we can check our work. Is it true that an a by b rectangle would have an area of positive ab? Yes, it is. And then even more importantly, oh my goodness, look at that there is the a plus b factor that we wanted to try to find to be able to cancel out this a plus b in our denominator. So in fact, what's happening here is our very clever MIT test writers from 1869 have given us a trinomial that is factorable, that we can write as a minus 3b times a plus b, and that therefore we can cancel with this a plus b denominator and simplify the multiplication that we're going to have to do here. Now, instead of multiplying a trinomial times a trinomial, I'm just going to end up multiplying a trinomial times a binomial, which is a little bit easier. To push our modern technique a little bit further, we can also use the box method for that multiplication. We're going to draw a 2 by 3 box, 2 by 3, because we're multiplying a binomial with two terms times a trinomial. The a minus 3b, the two terms, we'll put down the side of our box here, and then the 3a squared plus a b minus b squared will go across the top of this box. From here, we do that same thing we did all the way back with 13 times 14. We're going to treat these as a bunch of different rectangles that we're going to find the area of, and then we're going to add those areas back together at the end to get our final product. 3a squared times a, that's 3a cubed. a times ab, that's going to be a squared b. a times negative b squared, that's going to be minus a b squared. 3 a squared times negative 3 b, that makes negative 9 a squared b, and I can already see, oh, I'm going to have like terms on these diagonals, just like we did earlier, that I'm going to be able to add together to come up with my final product. Negative 3 b times positive a b is going to give us back negative 3 a b squared, and again, I notice some like terms along that diagonal. And finally, negative 3 b times negative b squared is positive 3b cubed. So at the end of this whole process, after we've done our canceling, after we've done our multiplication for whatever was left over, we add together these partial products and we get the actual result that's going to get us into MIT class of 1873. 3a cubed, which is all by itself, no like terms to go with, minus 8a squared b coming from the two terms along this first diagonal, minus 4ab squared, ab squared coming from the sum of these next two terms plus 3b cubed. And so it's that way that a more modern technique, the area model for multiplication, can help us do a problem written over 150 years ago. I hope you have enjoyed this little trip down mathematical history. I will put a link down in the description below where you can see the Latecified document for that MIT entrance exam. There are some other cool problems that you can try there. Throw your favorite into the comments if I can. Maybe I'll do another video and otherwise I will see y'all next time.